Very important. Come on, virtual. Hello, how are you? Good, sir. How are you? Pretty good. I'm trying to thumb my way through this, so uh, bear with me, okay?
Zane Picker, prosecuting attorney, asked a couple months ago, asked Devin to ask me to ask the board if we can modify that to where we are up with the state uh, limits, which is now $1,650, or sorry, $2,650 as a maximum fine. And after 364 days, minus one as previously, because otherwise it's a full year, you're only supposed to put someone in jail up to a year, no longer. Uh, since I've been here, and I think Carl can attest to this, we've never incarcerated anybody uh, more than a day or two. At the most, the judge will issue a bench warrant for Phil to pay or Phil to appear. They get arrested, they bond out pretty much the same day. The reason we don't incarcerate, number one, is it's municipal court, mostly traffic, ordinances, and misdemeanors. Secondly, uh, we get charged per day per inmate, which we can't afford. It's like 50 bucks a day now, I think, was it last I last I knew. So those most ser more serious cases, we send those to this district court or Wilkes County Court. And as far as the fine amount, I have seen the judge over the years issue a fine up to close to a thousand dollars. But those are case by case situations. Uh, I don't really have an issue with Mr. Pick's request. It doesn't really change how we operate court. It's just his request is to make this up to the same standard that the state allows us to be as part of our and penalties. And that's where this stems from. So I told Mr. Pick I'd present this to the board tonight. Questions, comments, and concerns? I move to approve ordinance 796, an ordinance of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville amending section. 1-4-20 of the Platinum Municipal Code to change the general penalty for municipal violations as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Carried. Moving on to resolution 2021-01, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville authorizing approving the town's participation in the Metro Mortgage Assistance Plus program and authorizing the execution of a delegation and participation agreement and other documents in connection therewith. Mr. Rankin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, I'd like to driving and training at the same time. David, can I put like a this on the screen? Mm -hmm. Or does it allow this one at a time? You can share it that would be great yeah it'd be great okay. and that and as you do that i'm going to just summarize to the board that this request came in a couple months ago to mary to pass it on to me uh, this is a program that i also forwarded to kendra our town attorney to validate that is a legitimate program she said it is for most of a lot of her clients that she represents not just us uh, participate in this program it is a uh, metro mortgage assistance plus program uh, it is something that i, I told uh, Diana Minard Minardi, I think is her last name. I think she's on with us tonight. That I would present this to the board at this meeting since we canceled the first meeting of the month. So this is something based upon request that I just allowed to uh, present to you for consideration tonight. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you guys, whoever wants to take the lead on the presentation. Um, I'll take the lead. Uh, my name is Andrew Johnson. I'm with the city and county of Denver. I'm in the uh, Department of Housing Stability, where we work on programs that help home ownership all the way through um, housing homeless. And so this particular program fits in our spectrum and our mission of home ownership, and it's all about uh, being the sisters. And with me tonight, we have a full crew. Uh, we have uh, Diana Minardi, who's uh, with Steve as well as Scott Ripple, and I believe, um, I can't see anyone on the screen, but I think Jack is also on uh, the call as well. 
And so uh, I'll, I'll walk us through a quick presentation, but uh, we are all here to help answer questions that you might have about this Downgrade Access Program. The action uh, that we're actually looking for tonight is to approve uh, a resolution to allow the Metro Mortgage Assistance Plus program to operate in the town of Platteville. Um, it is a that resolution that authorizes the execution of the delegation and participation agreement. And the reason that we need to do this is that the city and county member acts as a housing finance authority, it's a local housing finance authority. And we only have jurisdiction in our city and county. So uh, we've been offering this to um, since 2013 to any other uh, municipalities and jurisdictions that would allow uh, have this offered up to their uh, to their citizens. And that is why we're here today. Is um, we've gotten a few calls from lenders that um, have been trying to do loans in that jurisdiction, and we said no, we're not authorized yet. And um, we've also um, made some, um, so we're making this uh, outreach to you today to see if you're interested. The nice thing about this is there's no cost to your town. Um, we, uh, it's already an operating program, so there's no need to contribute anything. It doesn't work off the private activity bond allocation, so we're not looking for that. Um, it's, it's just whether or not you would like to offer this and join the program that's already functioning. Um, and this agreement, as it says here on the slide, will terminate um, whenever the program is just continued, but we don't, uh, it's an evergreen style program, and we don't have any termination date um, anticipated. Um, this here is just a little more uh, history on the program. It uh, did start out in 2003. Its full legal name is the Metro Mortgage Assistance Plus Program. As it got to be a little bit of a mouthful, so we changed it to Metro DPA. Uh, I thought that was a little better. Um, but essentially, it's a down payment program where it offers people a down payment assistance for a uh, 30 year fixed rate mortgage, either in FHA, VA, or a conventional style loan. So it's for the people who um, qualify in all ways, shapes, and forms for any of those styles of loans. But the only thing that they are missing is that they, they don't have the opportunity to save up the down payment. <coughs> um, in 2018, we updated our program. Um, you see there's three people here from uh, um, Stiefel. And Stiefel is essentially the financial partner for this. This uh, program does take a lot of partnership to bring to fruition. Um, Stiefel is the financial partner for this program and that's why you'll see them here and they've been very integral in rebranding this program uh, to the Metro DPA and also um, encouraging uh, the expansion to out, outside of Denver and the Metro Mortgage Assistant or the Metro area. So um, that is that's one of the big things that we've been working on. Um, and that's that with that slide. This program, uh, this slide here talks about the details of the program. The program essentially offers between three and six percent down payment assistance in, in the amount of the loan. So, um, it, it does, whatever that assistance comes as, it is a forgivable um, three-year grant uh, where uh, they have a second mortgage on the loan, and after three years, it's completely forgiven. And it's so. And the nice thing about it is. It actually prorates over those 36 months. So each time that a, a person makes a payment on their first mortgage, then 136 of that loan balance is forgiven. Uh, we only do this for home purchases. There's no maximum purchase price, but we do have a maximum qualifying income. Uh, we base it off of the maximum qualifying income as $150,000, which is 150% of Denver's area median income. Um, we have a minimum FICO score of 640, which is uh, is a good low target. Uh, a lot of other programs only go up to 680. Um, and we do require home buyer education. Um, there are these home buyer education classes, which we feel are really important 
to help people understand not only to make what they get into a home, but what are the costs associated with owning and operating a home. Um, and so with that, let's see here. How is the DPA funded? So how the DPA is funded is we work through um, with our partners in uh, FHA um, and uh, Fannie Mae and Jenny Mae to and as well as like the partners, the servicers, and with Stiefel, and we, we as the city and county of Denver have worked with these partners to try and find efficiencies and really try to drive the cost down as low as possible. And what we've ended up with is a program where we have competitive interest rates and we're yet able to also provide that three to 6% down payment assistance. And just as an example, um, so like today's rates for a, a FHA 30-year fixed loan in this program is at 2.625. And that is like the same rate as you could, that, that anyone could go get at like a bank. But the nice thing about using this program, you also get 3% of your loan amount as the down payment assistance. So that, that is just a, like an illustration of like some of the efficiencies that are baked into the program that we've been using for since 2013. Um, let's see here. Uh, we do have two servicers, um, both Lakeview and US Bank, and the, the down payment assistance is funded at the closing table. Here is a list of all of our participating jurisdictions. Um, we do have to work with, uh, we do have to get the counties as well as cities and towns to allow us to operate in their jurisdictions. Just when we, just because we have a county doesn't mean that we can automatically uh, capture the cities as well. Um, so because each of, uh, each of those municipalities is a separate governmental entity and we have, we need to seek those authorities for just those um, boundaries. Here is some of our program partners that I've been talking about. Um, it does take, it takes a lot of folks to make this uh, operate and function. It is a, we are acting as a local housing finance authority and as such, we have a lot of uh, administrative uh, tasks that we need to do and uh, reporting that we need to take on. Um, and so we're already doing this and we're more than happy to share our, our benefits with everyone. Uh, if you'd like to let us join and offer this in your jurisdiction. And with that, I think, yep, that is the end of my slideshow. Uh, take on any questions. So this is this is um, sponsored by the city and county of Denver? Yes. What's their interest in housing in Plata? Sure. Um, well, A, um, Platteville is just north of the, of the city and county of Denver. And as housing costs continue to rise, I know that people that, uh, that are potentially having jobs or commuting to Denver um, are going to need um, a place to live. And that could be Platteville. And that's one of the reasons we do this. Uh, the other reason that we want to do this is uh, for the program itself, by having a wider dispersion of, of, of the metropolitan area, our, our program is essentially funded by mortgage-backed security process, which is used across the nation. And when you know Denver is a, it's a big area, right? Um, but when you look at it from a national perspective, the, if we can get bigger than just the city and county of Denver, we can grow to a, a larger size, we have a larger Footprint. We have uh, a bigger variety of people using the program, and we have a better credit profile. We then get better pricing, which just helps us keep the program competitive. So that those are some of the main reasons uh, for why we'd like to offer this. What are the towns in Weld County do you have in the program, and do you have Weld County as a member of the program? Weld County is not a part of the program. Yeah. Yeah, Well County has not joined um, yet. Um, and I, uh, I don't think we've approached them yet. So, well, and if I can introduce, um, this is Diana with Stiefel and uh, the towns of Greeley, Evan, um, Lock Bowie, uh, um, Mead, 
Bursid, Taval, um, are part of Wilkes County that have um, joint program, and so we can list those for you. We are in the process, we reached out to um, a, a handful of others, and we are in the process of moving forward with those as well. We're continually adding jurisdictions, and the other thing you mentioned was um, the Metro Mayor's Caucus got together, um, all the mayors from all the jurisdictions, just thinking, brainstorming about how they could um, increase the, the ability for affordable housing in the Denver metro area. And so this, this program was a result of those mayors meeting together and having conversations to, to see how they could benefit their residents. What, so with foreclosures, I guess, is there, with foreclosures, who would uh, take the ownership of the house or the property? Like well, with uh, any foreclosure, if you go through a difficult situation like that, it's not the desired outcome. But a foreclosure process would be the same thing that is regulated by the state. And any foreclosure that goes on in Colorado follows the same process. And we would have the same process. Same process. Okay, so it'll be owned by the bank, not the city of Denver? It would not be owned by the city of Denver. Okay. Another thing, that, um, if I can interject and mention that that second loan that is offered for the down payment assistance that is up from three to six percent of the first loan amount, that was zero percent interest. So that would be as well. Zero interest and zero payments. Thank you for the clarification. Yes, yeah. forgivable up to three years. Correct. Who pays for that portion? So if you say it's that's pay that's funded at closing is that the city of denver that's paying that I mean, that's the part i'm confused about i guess yeah the closing costs sure it's it's, it's a complicated financial transaction but um it, it, ultimately um city county of denver as a sponsor for this program is responsible for being able to at any point prove that the loans that are going to this project uh, this program actually can be funded by the city and county of Denver. We use our, we have some financial backing uh, out of our city to ensure that and see evidence of that. But it is the mortgage-backed security process that um, is funded by the lender. The lender then gets reimbursed by uh, Stiebel. Stiebel then consolidates these loans into <coughs> mortgage-backed securities and sells them off to investors. And slowly but surely, the reimbursement comes to all the appropriate parties. So it's it's the it's a little bit of great partnerships and the pricings we have to make the down payment possible, as well as like what uh, people can uh, garner in the market for um, the securities that are ultimately backed by the mortgage payments that make the down payment possible. But the city and county of Denver does have um, has to illustrate at any given time that it has enough money to fund the down payments that are committed to. What if somebody sells their house within three years? It's a good question. The, um, if, if the house is sold in three years, uh, or prior to the three years, there is that uh, second mortgage, and that down payment assistance is forgiven uh, up to however many payments they've made, 136 per month, but then the, the balance of that um, would still be owed on top of sale of the home. Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Larry, I would love to hear what you have to say about this. Well, uh, it's a nice way for a presumably first time homeowner to get in to a homeownership with a, basically a subsidized interest rates and the uh, forgiveness part is pretty attractive. You know, I don't have anything else to add beyond that. And uh, I'm in the 
part of my life where I'm not uh, sending any bankers' kids to college anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm done with that. But I mean, you know, it's an, it sounds like an attractive program. Uh, I, I don't see a downside to it. And certainly, um, if we wanted to offer it to uh, residents or potential residents, it's uh, pretty attractive. Troy, what would this do to benefit our growth in town? Possibly you're talking about um, expanding, we can acquire some more land and get more developers. Would this be more appealing to developers, I guess, maybe? Potentially. I mean, subdivisions, if you look years ago at Rogers Farm, that third phase, people who were first or second time home buyers trying to qualify for, for some of those properties probably could take assistance in this program or benefit from it. Is this a first-time buyer program only? No. Or any? Okay. No, uh, it's, it's available to anyone who's purchasing a home, so it doesn't have to necessarily be a first-time home. Does it have to be a primary residence? It does have to be a primary residence. Um, that is the purpose of our program, is to create housing stability. That's right. that's our mission. And, and so, making sure that it's a primary residence, having people educated about what it takes to own a home, and then give them the money that essentially they, they haven't been able to save up for it at a competitive rate, that's that's the point of the program. So you're trying to help the younger population or generation buy a home so not throw money away at rent, 2,000 bucks a month? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I've got too many in, in my family already doing that, so. I just had that. I was kind of surprised that the interest rate that they were offering too. I figured, like, well, they're going to pay for this with their interest rate, probably. And it's going to be three and a half over. But that's, that's super competitive. Well, it, it, it takes a little bit of commitment, you know, three year commitment from the, the purchaser too, so they get that discount. Yeah. So that, you know, that's a good part of the program too. It's not quite by much. And you've been doing this since 2013, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. We have, yeah, it's been in place since 2013. We redid it in 2018. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been in place for a second. <laughs> not a fair question, maybe, but do you know since that time how many loans you've distributed or given out in this program? Um, actually, it's on the presentation. Oh, is it? Uh, okay. Let me see here. Page, ah, page three. Yes, oh, we've done 2,915 loans. Wow. Helping many households. Okay. So are you basically slow, slowly working your way north from Denver then? Is, is that what I get? You just haven't made it up to Will County Commissioners yet? Um, I, that's the goal. Um, I, I've given Diana some uh, direction to try and help get our uh, service area a little more inclusive. Um, El Paso County already has a very similar program, not quite the same, so we're not probably going to go south, but um, there's no similar style program that you offer in the northern part. Well, and also I want to interject, we have a lot of borrower requests and lender requests as we move, move up the I-25 corridor north, and um, we probably get a couple of calls a week with from lenders and borrowers with an interest and the reason for that is especially during COVID right now is so many people are finding out that they can work remotely from home that they don't uh, necessarily want to purchase something right in the heart of the Denver metro area they want to move outwards so that they can work, work, work remotely and they get a very good value the further north they go from Denver it's very pricey in Denver so are you marketing these to different lenders around Northern Colorado so that they're aware of the program? Um, there are a hundred plus lenders that are already participating in the program and um, we get continual calls from lenders as well. They, they go on to our website um, and learn about the program, whether a borrower has reached out to them and said, hey, I Googled this and I learned that this program is in the Denver metro area. Can you tell me about it? and that will spur the, the lender to do a little bit of research and then reach out to us and so it, it just the having that website um, itself brings in a lot of traffic okay. 
Any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, thank you both for the presentation. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I move to approve resolution 2021-01. The resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville authorizing and approving the town's participation in the Metro Mortgage Assistance Plus program and authorizing the execution of a delegation and participation agreement and other documents in connection therewith and the accompanying delegation and participation agreement as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay, motion carried. Okay, Diana, the board just approved the resolution, so Mary Lear Town Clerk would have the mayor sign that and get that sent off to you shortly, okay? Great, thank you so much and welcome aboard. All right, thank you for the presentation. Okay, have a good night. All right, you too. All right, moving on to resolution 2021-02, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville accepting a petition for annexation of a parcel of land located in unincorporated Weld County comprising 6.327 acres located at 8677 Highway 66 in Platteville uh, and setting a public hearing on the annexation. Mr. Rankin. Thank you. I'll just verify Larry was still with us. Thank, thanks, thanks for staying, Larry. I don't know, Brown. I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Melissa, of course, our town planner, and also uh, the property representatives or the owners, who's Damon and Tracy. Correct. Uh, you. you want to stand up and introduce yourself to the board? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Damien Perez, my wife, Tracy Perez, thank you for having us tonight. Welcome. Very awesome. Thank you. Very good. So I'm going to turn over to Melissa to yeah. uh, get us started. Yeah, so this is uh, Stacy and, and Damien have submitted an application, a petition for annexation, and um, they currently have a contract, right? It's still a contract on the silo property. Yes. So they're the authorized representatives um, that went through the annexation process, and the, the property owner themselves knows about that. So, um, and tonight it's really a, what we have to do initially is check that it complies with the statute. You know, the necessary elements um, are documents have been submitted for the annexation, and so that's the compliance check. There's certain criteria that have to be met, um, and they have met that. Um, the application has. And then we're setting hearing dates. So that's uh, what happens uh, with the resolution that's part of your packet. So the hearing date is March 2nd of 2021. Um, at that time, we'll go through more detail about where it is and um, kind of the details of the application. But tonight, it's really about compliance and setting the hearing dates so that we can go forward. And there's there five times that it's published before we get to the March, March 2nd date. So all this is uh, driven by the state statute for annexation, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So that's the resolution um, 2021-02. Questions, comments, concerns? It's looking great out there, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Oh, they were going to bring like 150 people to mine. I said they didn't have to. <laughs> hey, I just asked if we needed to bring some of our customers. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you that I think the board is pretty uh, open to uh, what we're doing to us. Some of these documents. So how is business? It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly, when we first bought it, I was really concerned about how close it is to the highway. I was really like, if you're going to build a building that size, why not back it up just a little bit? But it actually works out well. We we do a lot of training with dogs that are scared of noises, scared of cars, scared of sirens, just kind of nervous dogs that need some confidence. And so that road has been phenomenal. It's safe, we have it lined now. So they can go out in the yard and we can practice environmentally, you know, environmentalization or exposure to the loud traffic while we're walking them, comforting them so they understand hey, just because that semi sounds like it's going to drive right through me, it's actually not, you know. So it's been a great location. The traffic 
as I said, our client base is building daily and it's it's mostly people coming from Platteville that are like, I love that I can drop my dog off and know he plays and he's taken care of and then I come home and he's sleepy and ready to just love me and go to bed. So it's been phenomenal. The town, people stopping in just to say how great it looks and compliment the doors. Yeah, and Troy stopped in. So it's been, it's been amazing. It's been, the town has been so welcoming and very warm, very supportive pushing us a little to get open fast as we possibly can because they were like coming in the parking lot. So we were busting it, trying to get everything ready, but good, doing well so far. Great. Great. So the resolution um, has Tracy, but Melissa's report has Stacy. Is it Tracy? Oh. It is Tracy. It's T-R-A-C-I. Yeah. I apologize. I can't for the life of me. Are we? We just had our own software created for the company, so we can actually. It'll like an owner will be able to get a log every time the dog went to the bathroom, when they went out to play, how long, who they were with, what they were doing. So mm -hmm. this software, our our own software guy was having <laughs> some issues earlier too. So yeah, we're we're getting there. Okay, just lots of things. Do we need to just fix well, that? Let's see, it's the resolution you're saying? The resolution is correct, but the, I think it's your, it's your report. report. I think mm -hmm. we're okay if the resolution is correct. And now it's part of the record. It's all the matter, right? Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for coming that. Any yeah. other questions, comments? On the meeting date on the agenda, it's 1117, just for the record, it'll say 119 to 2021. It doesn't really matter. But it's, uh, and then, uh, not to overstep anything, but I think Damon also specializes in, in some training out there as well. Uh, yes. In canine training? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've got a little bit of a history with that. Yeah. Really? Damien is a former law enforcement. Yeah, I, had canine, so. I had canines to go for you. <laughs> 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 pro law enforcement town, Damien. So. Yes. yes, very good. Thank you. Well, <laughs> thank you. We've and been fortunate, actually, to <coughs> let him keep, keep training those kinds of dogs, too. So that'll be fun. And the chief eventually wants one like we used to have years ago, so we may be talking. <laughs> All right, absolutely. Yeah, right, right <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions, comments, concerns? I entertain a motion, please. Move to approve resolution 2021-02, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Platteville, Colorado, accepting a petition for annexation, annexation of a parcel of land located under in unincorporated Weld County, com uh, comprising of 6.327 acres located at 8677 Highway 66, Platteville, Colorado, 80651, and setting a public hearing on an annexation as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Resolution carried. Congratulations, you two. Thank you. Congratulations. So, Thank um, you. So the next hearing to be at will be March 2nd. Right? March 2nd will be the next time to come back. And that'll pretty much finalize the same day. 7 p.m.? 7 p.m. All right. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll have a planning commission and a board. Yeah, that's right. So. Because okay. we'll, we'll have to do the zoning as well. Planning Commission does that. So 6.30, I correct myself. Planning Commission, I forgot about that. Perfect. But we'll send you a reminder. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. 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 The Town of Platteville Three Mile Plan. Mr. Rinkin. I'll defer to Melissa for a good thing. Yeah. So, as I, I indicated in the staff report, the Three Mile Area Plan is part of our comprehensive plan. And that hasn't really changed, but we haven't updated it, which we're supposed to do annually. Probably your town planner should be on top of that a little better. But um, 
what we're doing tonight is going ahead and approving the resolution so that it's current and it's it's in compliance with the statute. So the, the as the annexation goes to public hearing in March, we need to have this in place so that we're all set up. In our three mile plan has changed from what we've had before. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And I'll add to that, a lot of communities will actually literally go three miles the circumference around their, their town. We don't. We we'll only go about a half mile east, and then three miles north, south, and west, just because that's our growth pattern. Because we can't service anything across the cemetery hill, not practically. And I'll foresee a developer willing to pay the cost to run the water sewer over the hill. So our focus is north, south, and west. Oh, we're updating our uh, comp plan this year. That'll be an update this year because we're going to have the water component for this summer. Yeah. Well, why not put it in there just in case? The rest would be a agree. discussion with the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can bring that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to build a wastewater plant on the other side of the hill and <laughs> two hundred houses. They yeah, can I'll have it, Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, there's, there's no rhyme or reason since I've been here. Uh, even back when I was chief, it's always been that way because it's always been, you know, just an obstacle. But if something you want to modify, that's fine with me. So that'll be coming up this summer. Metro district option, things like that. Sure. Interesting. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right. Entertain a motion, please. I move to approve resolution 2021-03, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Blackville, adopting the Town of Blackville Three Mile Plan as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Resolution carried. Moving on to E, wastewater treatment facility update. Mr. Rankin? I'll probably start. There's nothing formal tonight. Unless if you want to excuse me. Yeah, uh, we don't think they'll be riveted by your <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. You might only because of the bad news. So. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. See you next week. Since we last met, David's been working, uh, attending meetings with JBA and Molt, who's our CMAR that the board authorized, and doing uh, what's called value engineering, trying to cut costs. Because since the initial estimate back in 2018, the cost of this facility has drastically increased. We were estimating about a $5.5 million facility. Right now, it's closer to about 6.8. In the last two years, the costs have gone up primarily with concrete costs, and construction is skyrocketing. So Dave is working as hard as he can with, with Molson GBA to, to complete that 60% design. Uh, we're making some headways, but it's 50,000 here, 20,000 here, which on a multi-million dollar project is going to take a lot of those to get to that where we want to be. Uh, this last week was extremely busy, mainly for David, but I helped him because uh, last Thursday, David and I in this room presented our dual application to the advisory committee with the state. Um, we were at 3.15 in the afternoon. The, the committee started at 8 o'clock in the morning. They ended at 5. They had 30-some applicants. Uh, well over $30 million in, in requests, and they have 17 to give out. I think our application was pretty strong. We felt the community responded to us very well. They had very few questions. One actually represents, uh, on the committee actually works for Rosetta Bennett, mm -hmm. and she was uh, kind of siding with us because she just went through the same issue with Bennett a few years ago, so that was kind of nice. Um, I really stress the impact of oil and gas in our community because this is severance tax money and that factors and weighs heavily on our process so i really stress that part of it while david discussed the details of the facility part of that uh that next day last friday david had to submit the loan application the srs state revolving fund loan application to cdkg which uh, he did Pretty much all on his own with a little help from JBA, and we also reached out to Rep. Tellus. If you remember, Rep. Tellus a few years ago did our financial rate analysis. Part of the loan application was an update because it's been two years for that rate analysis, plus the cost of the So, long story short, 
everyone vividly remembers that this board approved a 53 percent increase in the early part of 2019. Based upon Rob Tellis's update, we're looking at another 16 percent increase in the next two years without a grant. With a dollar grant, that could be cut in about half, but we won't know yet. So I told David, I told Mary, I wanted to present this to the board and be truly, you know, full disclosure to you. This uh, really came to light last week under realization talking to David and uh, working with JBA and presenting this application. It was pretty clear after talking to Andrew Ring with Rob Tellis that uh, without growth, these same citizens that we represent are be paying more and more. And trust you me, we are trying our best to cut every cost we can. The thing that David and I have talked about with JBA is do we cut to such bare bones where two years from now we realize we needed something and it's twice as much two years from now as it is now. So that's a delicate balance and that's really what David and Moltz and JBA is working on right now. So it's not a pleasant conversation but I won't be can with the board. I'm not going to hide anything from it. Okay, right now we're looking at some increases coming up. But after that it would be probably an average two to three percent increase in annually. So I've got my fingers crossed that we get this grant. We're going to look for any other grant that's out there that we can get. And this is based upon a 30-year loan at about a 3% interest rate. And we won't know that until we get the response back from the loan application with CDKG. So not to be gloom and doom, but I want to let the board know as soon as, you know, this kind of came to service last week. So. Um, we did tell the DOLA advisory committee that we pursued an alternative technology, which they said, you know, uh, they just, the, the company out of Iowa simply could not get their approval from CDPHG in time. And to my knowledge, they still haven't yet. And going back to the update of the study, this is still the most economically affordable solution for the town of Bible, an SBR system. So we're looking at all aspects, but I, again, um, David, do you want to add any thing to my uh, cheerful speech tonight, or do you want to <laughs> defer? Uh, basically, what we did was taking the 6.8 number, we applied with SRF for 6.3 because the town has 500000 in the bank. Um, the, the numbers get much better if we get the grant. Um, and we, we should be hearing the middle to end of February on the $165,000 grant that was applied for as well. So um, we're hoping between DOLA and the other grant um, that there could be as much as $1.1 million. Um, I suspect because there was so many requests for the DOLA money, um, I, I will be very pleasantly surprised if we get fully funded for our million dollar request there. Um, so, and uh, made it very clear to JBA and to Moltz that uh, if we do get the grant, that doesn't mean we get to add all the bells and whistles. <laughs> because it's, it, it, we're still, uh, we're, we're, like Troy said, we're walking the fine line between making sure that we don't um, leave something out that two to five years from now when the next requirement comes in it's going to cost us X dollars more to put in at that time than, than now. Um, so uh, part of the, the 2018 estimates that were put out there uh, as far as the opinion of probable, probable cost had not anticipated the kind of um, concrete placement costs going up as drastically as they have. And we um, anticipate about so 10 percent variance, but not this drastically in the last two years. They, uh, um, they're, they're, we're looking at everything. We're making sure that the tank sizes are big enough to do what we need to do, but we're looking to minimize the tank sizes. We're not just leaving them. The, the, the JBA is literally analyzing exactly how many gallons we need to be able to put in each tank with a conservative you know buffer in there but 
Um, the tank sizes originally that were in this 30% estimate were bigger than what they're going to end up being. So some of those costs are going to come down. But like Troy said, some of it is you know 50 to 100 thousand dollars here and there. If we can find you know 20 of those here and there's, then we're in pretty good shape. But right now we're, we don't know that we will be able to do that. Things like covering the digester. Um, that's probably a fifty to eighty thousand dollar expenditure. Um, it would help with the treatment process some, but it's not required. So that's one of those things where, okay, we can take the cover off that, not put those in, and, and so those are the types of things. JBA will have the sixty percent plans done um, the end of January, and those numbers then molts will take a couple of weeks to go through and take the revised numbers or the revised plans and put numbers to all that so we will have a, a, a better estimate as to where we are um, somewhere in the middle of February. So when you talk about reducing the size of tanks and whatnot, David, are we, when we do that, are we cutting back our opportunity for growth? I mean, are we, are we minimizing the amount of people that are going to be able to use it or the amount of growth we can have in the future? Um, no, and, and let me try to explain that, Mike. Right now, the, the, the lagoons are rated at 348,000 gallons per day. And normally, in the normal course operations, when you get to 80% of your treatment capacity, the state requires you start planning, and when you get to 95%, you have to be under construction. We're only between 45 and 50% of our capacity right now. So one of the steps that we were able to stay with the state, we didn't have to pay the fees and we didn't have to go through the review, was we didn't try to re-rate the size of the plant because our 20% our 20-year growth projection only puts us at about 75 to 80% of our plant. So the when we're talking about reducing the tank size, they had they had put what they had done is they had looked at three different manufacturers. So they took the biggest tank size that one of the manufacturers had said they would need, and we had put that on the thirty percent drawing. So now that we've picked a particular manufacturer of the type of system, they're refining the size of those tanks down to what this manufacturer says we'll be able to do our 348,000 gallons per day, plus the peaking factors and all those things that have to be factored in. The tanks will will um, be big enough to do all that. Um, the other side of the coin is if we do hit a growth spurt and we start getting up close to that 80% number of the existing capacity, by then, our tap fees and other fees should be putting more money in the bank so that we can add, and the beauty of the, the SDR is that we can add a second train to the system so we could start planning for adding another system alongside it. Because we're only going to be at about 45 to 50 percent of the system's capacity when we come online. Okay. So this rate, rate situation with regards to financing the bond. What kind of commitment do they need from us? Nothing yet. Uh, a lot will depend if we get the dollar grant. And right now, the and Andrew Ream from our Telus gave us the worst case scenario, and it was 8% 22, 8% 23. After that, it goes back to 3%. If we get the dollar grant, it'd be closer to a 4 or 5% increase, which is much more tolerable. But we won't know that yet until we find out about the grant and we get further down the road. We won't be very long. On, that's based on a million. So if we get less than that. If we get less than that, then we'll, we'll yeah. contact Andrew and he'll reevaluate the cost. It all depends on numbers. So that's, unfortunately, you know, that's just in the last month, the inflationary cost and what Dave was going through with JBA and like every time I sat on some of the meetings, but every time he came out of the meeting, he scratched his head saying, Troy, we can't control this. You know, the, the, the concrete is killing us, quite literally. Yeah, we talked to our concrete plant here in town, and are they willing to give us any kind of a deal on this mass quantity of concrete? At this point, Adrian, um, Moltz 
I, I don't know whether they, they normally have United on their bid list. And when they get to the 60%, I don't remember if it's the 60 or the 90% category is where they'll actually bid the numbers. So, But what they're doing right now is they're using takeoffs on current projects and they actually, um, JBA said the numbers that Moltz were using was about 10% lower than what they've been seeing, but Moltz said that's what they were getting from their vendor. Um, so I want to say that vendor that they last used was the, the Burn Co or whatever it is over in Johnstown. Yeah. Um, the, and the, the JBA was impressed with the numbers because they were less than what JBA had been seeing in the Denver metro area. So we're hoping we get those discounts. We just, to answer your question, Mike, we, we just don't know yet. It's too early. But I, I'm throwing out worst case and poor <coughs> report, so full disclosure. And I, I fully anticipate not doing 8%, I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm thinking, like David said, well, I think we, we gave a very strong presentation. And of that day of last Thursday, David and I came in, we tuned in, we watched five or six of the presentations before us. It was David's first turn as well, so we kind of get accustomed to how we how those go. And it was definitely a day of needs and wants, you know. Uh, we definitely had a need. We stressed that. We are under compliance schedule. We have no option. You know, a lot of times Dola will ask an applicant, if you don't get funding, how will this affect your project? We didn't get to ask that question. They already knew. We have to build it. But about half the projects were no offense to anybody, fire stationary models, expansions, public works, shop and me, those are ones. Not that they're not essential, but we're under state requirement. We have to do it. And uh, so I'm hoping, you know, it's it's just part of the game as far as applying. You know, we, we put our best foot forward and go, and I'm hoping we get at least partial funding. And uh, once we know that and we see what the numbers are going to turn out to be, I'll have Andrew Rob tell us, give us a, another snapshot, but it'll be 2022 before we have that hard decision to make again. And the reason being is we won't be funding this probably what we think the second half of 22 before we are start making payments to on a loan. That that was the assumption if we're done on a 12 month construction and we actually begin in July, June or July of this year, then it would be late 22 that we would be <coughs> starting to make those um, loan payments. And, won't be. and again, I mean, it, and I want to actually grab this memo and this information on here to Mary tomorrow so you can so read through it. I didn't think about it tonight, but on the numbers that you'll see on this when I send it to you, for example, it has 110000 annually for an operator. You know, there are ways, hopefully, that David and I talked about it, of hiring somebody that's a full-time employee on board to oversee water wastewater that may have that license. And he's already done some research that they're out there. If we get a traction platform, we, we can cut our cost maybe 40000 So there's different things that we have to take a hard look at, but what we're dealing with is worst case scenario first, and then hopefully we're going to downscale it with some grants, with some lower costs. And uh, utilities are astronomical. Right now, I think it's 20, 25000 a year. With an SPR, you're going to look at pushing 100000 a year for utilities based upon the estimate because everything mechanical. So then you gotta look at maybe you decommission those lagoons and put in the solar rise farm and offset those costs. So there's still a lot of variables yet. So don't leave away that I, I, I burst everybody's bubble, but I want there to be a bubble, to be honest with you, because that's what we're facing. So when we start paying back that loan, um, is that do we have an idea how much that was gonna be a month and then will that come out of our, our sewer fund? Yeah, that's come out of our sewer fund and it'll be we have that estimate there. Is it yeah, a sure. monthly payment or is it going to be like an annual it's payment? It's an annual payment. It's an annual payment and we, and we pay monthly on it. It's uh, I need some bifocals. Maybe you have it. But I'm going to send this to you. I'm just curious what kind of number that is because that's a lot of money to. <laughs> 200 be be anticipated. I think I'm looking at the no grant. Um, oh, hang on, sorry. 
234,000 per year. And, and everybody on the residents monthly dues uh, uh, treatment is yeah. going to cover these payments and usage and base rates. And to keep in mind that we're not going bare bones. Okay, part of what we have to do, which is the requirement of SRF and CDPHE, is we have to bring enough revenue because we're going to drop our reserve way down. We're going to put as much cash for this project as possible, but we have to keep what's called a 130% limit. So we have to have a cash flow building back up. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to go bare bones. That's one That's one of the questions Dole asked us at the advisory committee is, how are you going to build money back up? Because in eight, 10 years, when we start replacing parts, well, part of this financing or part of the rate adjustment that we're assessing to the people is to build that reserve back up where we have the money for those long-term capital projects. And that's where that rough sell is on that 8% projection. That part of it again. 16%. Well, 8% one year, 8% okay. the next year. Yeah. But total 16%. And then it will be automatic at least 2 if not 3% after that. And that's just inflationary. Mm -hmm. That's just instead of the 1% we have right now. Exactly, okay. exactly. Well, and sorry. this, I'm sorry, Spencer, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm, I think we're looking at it. Go ahead, David. Okay, um, this, uh, part of the SRF requirement was to have a 30-year projected income, revenue, and expense statement to go with this, and so, that's part of this report that Troy will be sending out to you. It shows, and after a few years, you start to see the reserves come back up. You start to see, um, a, I think it was at year seven or 10, I don't remember, that they started putting some additional um, uh, O&M costs back into, the, into the, the calculation that weren't there earlier just to, make sure that we had enough <coughs> set aside for the replacement of pumps and other things like that that somewhere between the seven and 12 year mark start to wear out and have to be replaced. Your, your, your calculations don't add in any projected possible investment to the new growth, right? Zero. Okay. Zero. And, and you know, we did that to be conservative. So if we do have some growth, that will have a big impact on us. We do have growth. And that will. But we have to take this approach because I don't have any applications in front of me. You know, so I can't fool myself with the community by saying, you'll pay less because we're to grow. I can't guarantee that. I want to, but I can't guarantee that. So again, worst case analogy is what we're presenting tonight. So, I'm sorry, but I had to be fully disclosure and uh, full disclosure. I told David probably won't be an easy conversation, but you need to know. But we just don't to keep on doing it right, you know. So we're gonna wait. You know, we're gonna keep chopping away and reduce our delegation as much as we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. The only cash that we can use towards this is the sewer lagoon reserve, which is five hundred thousand. <coughs> And we have some cash in the sewer fund. We have some system investment fees and some cash on hand. That two-year bond just matured. So we are looking at applying that too toward this project. A lot of it, not all of it. Like we talked about before, we can't transfer money in out of college trust into this fund to help so it's better. So we have some money in college trust, you know, like it's just set aside there as an interest bank account is all it is but it's in the books it's in the sewer fund the water fund the general fund mm -hmm. it's allocated and we just i had david green move excess amount over there just to add that interest right but it's it's part of that i was just wondering when you said that we we talked to the with the loan with five hundred thousand down i thought we had more than that and some of you do what do you think we have to put down before the grant and pull everything together, what do you, what's the number? Well, as far as non-enterprise fund, yeah, we can go up to 10%. So if it's a $6 million, okay, 10%. I, we had the 500,000, I'm gonna ask the board for another 100,000 out of reserves to maximize that cash flow to reduce our debt obligation. That's what we're gonna do with the time. They can only be up to 10%. Only up to 10% of non-enterprise funds. And then David, is there any way to use I mean, this is, 
you know, you could look at it as subpar, but say we, I mean, the concrete is going sky high. So we use composite tanks for this process. I don't know if that gives us the structural integrity. I mean, these tanks are, I want to say they're 18 feet deep, and maybe they would. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a structural engineer, Spencer, so I, I, I can ask that question. I mean, I, I, I know. I understand, right? I, but yeah, I can, I, can out of the box. I can absolutely ask that question and find out. Um, Is there a... Oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, on uh, when you get the memo that Andrew put together, um, on page two of the memo, he lays out, um, and, and right now, with the 53% increase that we did in 19, and moving forward between now and when we actually take the loan, and that kind of thing, he's anticipating that there will be $1.7 million in cash in the sewer fund that we will put towards this out of reserves, not counting the 500000 And then he factored in... 600000 from the general fund because we were already over a $6 million project okay. as far as what we were, and we can take 10%. So he's calculating that So he's, he's already calculating those numbers into this. So, but I will certainly ask the question on a non concrete type thing. I don't know if we can get away with that. No, I, I, mean, geez, I don't know. It, it, would ha it would have to be stainless. And I can only imagine what those costs would look like in That's order to be up here. But what about purchasing? And I don't know if this is a possibility. You still have idea, and maybe they would have thought of it. But purchasing the concrete now—is there any possibility of getting it now at today's price, rather than waiting until we need it? Hedge so, the concrete. Right. Yeah. As a as a contractor. pre lock it. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know that the contractor would like that. They mark it up. The contractor would? Yeah. Yeah, they get bids, they mark it up. They they typically only do it, just, just like when we do contract. streets, only give maximum six month bid because of cost and variations. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's worth a shot, but. Well, I was just thinking that in that large of a amount of quantity of concrete mm -hmm. um, that we're going to be needing and some of the money that would be putting forward towards it. I don't know. I mean, a concrete company wouldn't say no. I wouldn't think. Granted, well, it would have to be relatively soon. I guess maybe they would want you to. They wouldn't say no. They get blacklisted from the contractor, and the contractor won't ask them anymore because they can't make their markup. I don't know, but I mean, it's. Who would you buy that concrete plant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it might pay for the sewer that on its own. Flat <laughs> fill concrete. <laughs> um, well, and the, the, the thing when people are talking about the concrete, to me, I immediately go to the 10-yard truck that comes out of United Ready Mix and drives past us here. Well, that's just basically one-tenth of the concrete cost because you've got the concrete, you've got the steel that goes in the concrete, you've got the placement of all the forms for the concrete, you've got, and that's the combined cost per yard of concrete that they're talking about. It's material and labor. So it's the whole, the whole enchilada is where so they're So the steel's going up, labor's going up, concrete's going up. And right now, the I town, think. we we got a heck of a deal right now because Moltz bid this CMAR project at 5% overhead for them, 5% profit. Mm -hmm. Everything else we had was 8 to 12%. So we saved 3% right off the bat. I mean, Moltz came in, and when they realized what the bids were, they were like, dang, we left 3% lying on the table. We could have gone 2% higher. But they said we they were still comfortable when we interviewed them they were still comfortable that they were going to be able to make money on this project. They were in a situation where they were between two other projects. They've got another one that's going to be starting after ours. They've got one that's supposed to wrap up in April or May of this year. And this is literally 20 minutes from Windsor where most of their crews are at. The foreman that's going to be running this job lives in Milligan. So this was a primo location for them to get their name on it, Northern Colorado. 
to have their staff close by, but it also was a situation where they could keep their staff busy when they thought that they were going to be down between a couple of projects. Yeah. So they were comfortable that they were still going to make money on it at 5%. Um, so I, you know, we'll, we'll see where the 60% numbers come in and, and go from there. Yeah, most of the lot of they don't have all the housing and transportation costs for the employees to just keep that and pour through their homes every day. So that's a benefit and yeah, I mean there's there's a lot of variables and factors. Uh, we still have a long ways to go, but in a short period of time. In the next couple of months we're gonna learn a lot more, but I, it's not like I wanted to start the year off with this conversation, but I need it. Well, I need it. We have and, to face it head on. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna hide anything from it. So this is, you know, Kind of gloom doom worst case scenario, and I'm, I'm hoping, got my fingers crossed, that it'll, it'll get a little bit better. There's some dollar grant application, and hopefully, local concrete, you know, company will help us out a little bit with some reasonable cost, and uh, we'll see what else we can do. Got a couple of trials in, in the garage, they come out well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our community project. Yeah. <laughs> no, it too. Go for it. I will, I will each month, uh, the second meeting of the month from now on, when Dave is present, give you an update, but no matter what the information is, I will make sure I give you an update every meeting. We'll just add that to the agenda, Mary, second meeting every month, which why you told you plan update, because you're really silly. But uh, that's all I have for that. That's the last item on the agenda for action or consideration. Not an action item, but. Any other questions or comments? Mrs. Mary I'm sorry? Hello? Uh -huh. Yeah, Larry. Hello? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, what's the maximum amount of funds available to the state you've all been going for? Is there, uh, is there a maximum there? I, Larry, I'll attempt to answer that question. Um, not that I'm, 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 I don't know what the maximum is. Uh, we applied for 6.3 million in the application on Friday. Hoping that we only need 5.3 or 5.1, but you apply for the max and then you modify that loan application based upon the other funds that you may get. Sure. So. So, what you're telling me, I, if I understand this right, is there's enough in the state revolving loan fund to cover the cost, no matter how many grants you may or may not get in addition to that. Is that right? Well, with, and given the fund balances, what they are. I believe. Yeah, let me ask that in a different way. Um, you got to get to the point where you're not going to have a shortage of funding when the bids roll in. We we don't right. we don't anticipate that, Larry. As long I mean we we had pre-qualified with the SRF for five point five three two million I think is what it was on our pre-qualification and we were in a strong financial position to to get that loan at 5.53 we okay. increased the loan application to 6.3 because worst case scenario we don't get the grants and we anticipate that we would be able to build this for 6.3 or less and the or less is the part that I am concentrating and pushing for right now, um, but not or less to the point that we um, cheapen it up and then we end up having to add something in the very near future that's gonna cost us more and we just kick the can down the road. Right. Okay. And, and I would like to add that 
I, I am not opposed to asking pretty much any question of JVA and the design team. So Spencer, your ideas of non-concrete tanks, stainless steel, fiberglass, whatever. Stainless coated seems to be the industry standard as far as I, it seems like stainless or steel coated is like a industrial thing to save money and then municipalities go with concrete, which is a bunch more money. So I don't know why, you know, the life longevity potentially, but studies, you know, this is quick Google searches, so I'm not an engineer, I'm not gonna pretend to be but maybe I will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, just for a moment. Just for a moment. We are engineers. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, it, it does seem like the studies that I'm reading here, they're giving the same sort of lifespan and for a lot less cost, a lot less. Okay. So it'd be worth a, an ask, a big ask. Okay. And, and see, and questions like that make it real easy for me to ask because it's not me asking. Right, exactly. Hey, the, the board is hounding me about this. <laughs> No, no, uh, and, and, and just because concrete might be tradition, or and, and maybe there's a really, really good reason that they have seen a failure in one of the others or something like that, I don't know. But um, it, it certainly won't hurt to ask. And I mean, it just just so you know, some of the questions that are being asked right now, the, the, the screen that's going to be in the Headworks building is, is, is a rotary screen because those are less expensive than the step screens. But one of the questions that was asked was, okay, if we do a step screen, they have a much smaller footprint. So then we can shrink the size of the building, we can shrink the size of the, um, the, the, the amount of concrete that's needed in that channel and, the, and those kinds of things. So Moltz put some numbers to that and the, the um, Shrinking the building would save us about forty thousand, maybe forty-five thousand dollars. But going from the rotary screen to the step screen was a sixty-five thousand dollar increase. So we we netted twenty-five thousand dollar loss on that <laughs> on that negotiation. So it was like, okay, we're staying with the rotary screen and we're going to stay with the full size building because it, you know. And then Moltz is saying, well, we'd save forty on that, but if we come back two years later and add on or do anything else. To, to put another treatment process in that building, to put the grit back in that building or something like that, and we haven't built the building originally, then you're looking at sixty five to seventy five thousand for that addition. So then it's like, well <laughs> but I will certainly ask and I will send those emails tomorrow and, and uh, go from there. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right, thank you. Second meeting of the month, we we'll just plan on this. Right. Moving on to reports. Uh, first report is Rex Seniors. Janet is not with us tonight. Well, Janet's big excuse was the, the death of the family, and uh, we wish her the best, and we just send her some flowers. She messaged me and wanted to thank the board and staff for yes. these flowers. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for doing that, Troy. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, police, Chief Blair. Thank you, Mrs. Mayor. Um, so we had an attempt at homicide in Rogers this past month, and it's under investigation still, but I know um, that the word's out there, so I'll answer any questions that I can. Um, the officer was from your report? But yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, there was one more on Highway 85. Um, it was a road rage and somebody shot inside of a car, got lodged in the headrest. Uh, we have no idea who that is. She didn't see him. We looked in the area. We had other officers, other agencies help us. So no luck on that one. In regards to the one that I mentioned in the report, um, they're in jail and they will be for a long, long time. Um, it was a guy and a girl, uh, but uh, resulted in a high-speed in a high high chase and they eventually were um, arrested after they ripped off another car and wrecked. So um, I know that that word's out. So like I said, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions if you guys have them on, on that. Is this, were they part of the vehicle robberies in Platteville before? 
Do yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, there here and um, everywhere from the city of Aurora. We've been in, uh, on the phone with investigators from them. They're interviewing them, and they're, these these are kind of bad guys. That they kind of hit it Bonnie every area Clyde, of the huh? state. What's that? Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, kinda, kinda, but um, but it had a happy ending. No one got hurt. No one got shot. Yeah. Officers are good, um, and they went to jail. So. About the best ending that I could. Well, um, this example, Carl, just today you were chatting with me and telling me what was going on, on the radio. Can you kind of summarize just those two calls you told me about today? I mean, just that example of what's going on in our area. Uh, a fatality accident on 18 and a half and Highway 85. And uh, then we had another one, Highway 66, 925. Um, there was an accident. The suspect hopped out of the car. Um, they hijacked another car with a handgun, ran north on Highway 85, or on I-25. Uh, he later, about an hour and a half later, got shot up in Evans by officers. So things things are for sure hard right now for cops, and um, that's just the world that we're living in. Uh, we're making it work, and but it's, it's obvious that um, we have to handle these kind of calls and the tensions are high. So I'm um, hoping that this upcoming year things will relax a little bit, but uh, it doesn't matter. Larger, small town, large, that's just kind of the world we're living in right now. So. And just to add one more thing to Carl's report, Carl and I talked a little bit today about this rumor about tomorrow's inauguration and things going on with all the state capitals and some of the good towns. And we have not heard anything in Plano, but Carl's on to the tomorrow I'm here, David's here, Mary. And by all means, if don't anticipate zero level, but if anything does arise, we'll let you know. I know there's a lot of tension right now. So. I haven't heard anything at all happening here, so but we're having a watchful eye. So. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions, comments, concerns, Thank you, Chief. Yes, yes sir. All right. Mr. Brown. Well, it seems I now have a uh, preview to my report. I really don't have anything <laughs> else to, to add to what was written. I'd be happy to attempt to answer any questions on anything that was on here. Um, it definitely was quite an experience to go through the, the DOLA uh, presentation, um, but to top that off with attempting to get the SRF loan put together and finalized was uh, uh, a challenge this last week, but we managed to get her taken care of. So, I will, I will say, Dave did a great job on his first application. We had eight minutes uh, when I did it four years ago for the senior uh, expansion, there was five minutes. Um, but we rehearsed a couple times while we were watching other presentations, and it came down to it. I think I took up three, and David had three seconds to spare when we concluded. So, we had seven minutes, not eight. Seven. <laughs> oh, that's a big difference. Seven. It really is. But I warned him, I said, it flies yeah. when you were on the clock. You know, there's literally, we're on the screen, facing the screen, and, you know, it's like the Brady Bunch, so all over the, the TV. <laughs> and there's like a hundred logged in, and we just, we're just seeing the ones we need to, and then there's a clock, and it just counts down. It makes you nervous as all get out. Yeah. But I looked at it once, I had 53 <laughs> seconds left <laughs> as I started page two of my presentation. <laughs> like. Uh oh, here comes the auctioneer voice. <laughs> oh, it's fun. I like that kind of stuff, but it's, it's a bit so. Well, great job, guys. And Nick, I don't know if you noticed that uh, the, the passing zones will be put back oh, into I, place. I, 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 I hope that wasn't just me, but I mean, no, 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 I'm no, sure no. I'm not the only one that didn't I'm notice sure that, that you can't probably pass. you that tailgate me and I did update that citizen on next door. Oh, yeah. I've been asking them. Did they been digging, um, pulling that dirt over to the uh, sewer lagoons, and did they get enough out of there to put over there then to? To, 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 it, it, I don't know if you've driven by the sewer lagoons. We're probably 12 to 18 inches shy on the north end of that yet. 
they are waiting to haul any more out there until he gets everything to final grade in the ponds where he's at because he doesn't want to haul it to the lagoon and then have to turn around and haul it back. So he's trying to make sure he's got some stacked on the sides and he's trying to finish up his, uh, uh, by the end of this week, they should have all the storm pipe installed, all the new pipe and everything else done there, get that all complete. And then um, probably beginning to the middle of next week, they'll move in and start taking the stuff out from behind the ball fields. So if, if there is still any room left, um, it will go, the, it, it, it'll, it'll take all the ball field material. It should take most of and anything that's left will probably end up at the cemetery. So, uh, but we should have that topped off. It, it, it's a totally different scene. Uh, if we end up doing spring cleanup days out there this year, um, because we, we won't have started construction yet, so we might be able to do it. <laughs> It, it, any of you that have been there for cleanup days before and know how it was down in the mm -hmm. ravine, now now we're I see on top right there, and it's yeah. almost <laughs> to the top of the fence that goes around the edges. So it would uh, it's going to be a totally different perspective for sure. Now, is there a reason why we have to be up so high, uh, or is it just because we wanted to fill that lagoon up? Um, the, the two reasons. Uh, number one, the tanks go into the ground quite a ways. But we were trying to um, build it up so that we only have to pump once and then we can gravity feed the whole system so we don't have to put additional pumps in. Um, so it, it actually, the Headworks building will sit even a little bit higher because where they excavate for the tanks to go, they'll move that material up so that the Headworks gets pumped up to there and then we should be able to gravity flow all the way back to the river at that point. So. We'll be planting trees, nice decorative fence for landscaping. It's going to be visible. Yeah, it's going to be a big building, stick, and big especially building. sticking up so high up off the, oh, out of the ground there, yeah. But at least they won't be looking at wastewater being circulated by aerators all day long. It's not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just plan on that every month, David. Wastewater kind of so good too. So. There's still going to be a smell associated with the place. I mean, there's a waste. Yeah, the it, 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 there, there, there will be some, absolutely. I, I, I mean, uh, as somebody that has dealt with wastewater for 30 <laughs> some years, the uh, um, you, you can always tell if a plant is running well or not when you walk into it. You get a good earthy smell. It's not real stinky or pungent. Um, and that was one thing that I loved about the, the GWT plant. When we walked into that greenhouse in Iowa, I looked at the operator and I said, it's running well, because you just walk in and it's not an obnoxious odor. It's an odor, but it wasn't an obnoxious odor at all. One of the things that we're looking at is um, scrubbers for the air that's coming out of the Headworks building. And, um, but we won't, if we don't put a lid on the, the aerobic digester then we won't have to scrub that air coming out of there because it'll already be exposed so there's there's pluses and minuses to everything we're looking at with it right now so okay. anything else for Ms. Brand? All right, thank you David. Everybody has the attorney's um, report. So we move down to Mr. Rankin. Thank you, Mrs. Mayor. And just FYI regarding Kendra, she, she has not to attend because she uh, her mom's back east and she goes back and forth to see her and she doesn't want to be around anybody in case she can try to go to the Uh I really don't have anything else to add tonight. A couple of things I'll mention up between meetings. Uh, Mr. Nick Silball wants to approach the board about the Dias property and we'll schedule that in the next meeting or two. Uh, I haven't decided which meeting in February, but that northern 50 foot, I talked to the board, mentioned the board he's interested in acquiring that. That northern 50 foot, so he could expand his shop. And I uh, haven't really done any schematic about ball fields or how we're going to lay that out, but uh, he keeps calling me, so I told Nick we'd, we'd have a conversation. Here you have those schematics ready for that? Because I, I was looking at it just roughly, and I was like, I don't think we should do that. I so I buy it. And depending on what size of fields we build, you know, and I was envisioning some smaller fields for the T-ball coach pitch softball, so 200 foot fields. So we need to go out there and take some measurements and, and do that. And I told, and I was honest with Nick, I said, we haven't had this conversation yet. We're going to do the property. Here's some ideas. 
but we really haven't put pencil to paper yet. So we were still a little early in the game. I think it's maybe premature to even have this conversation with him, okay. to be honest. But I don't know what you guys think. But well, without knowing what we're going to do with it. Right, exactly. So um, maybe we didn't have this conversation with him. We don't even know what the plan is for the property yet. Okay. Yeah, we build on ball fields, or can we build a facility where we're not bound to the school that won't let us use our facility? And you know? that's something that Jan and I have been talking about. You know, is it time for another Joko grant when the time comes and have a facility that. David actually came upon some very old maps from that, that aren't dated where it shows a complex and it has tennis court and outdoor basketball court and playground, this and that. But uh, the more I think about our own gymnasium, you know, for practice and games and this and that, nothing against the schools, but this is a prime example. You know, we're struggling to have access because it's not their fault. They're having all the sports at once all of a sudden. But anyway, that's, a, that's another conversation. But uh, yeah, I'll let Nick, we'll just hold off a little bit longer, just be patient, and we'll just do that. But I just know he, he called me quite a bit in the last month, so. Um, I'm hoping the county wraps up the hazardous mitigation plan. we we'll get that from the board next month. This Friday meeting with Alex with FHU, he came upon, and I, I looked at today, a new CDOT revitalizing Main Street program grant that gives some funding for uh, offset costs to revitalize Main Street. On that note, I sent out an email today to Lucas McConnell with Excel Energy, the regional manager, to get an update. I looked back and on September 15th, I had an email from him stating that Sturgis was walking Main Street to prepare for the underground. And that was in September. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get some answers for you, for me. So, And then today I started digging into our code. Uh, starting to do some preliminary work on this Water Smart program. I want to meet with everyone this next month and get that going again. I looked at our landscape standards, our dedication requirements, but it, I just I just spent about an hour on it today. So I want to have some stuff preliminary done before we meet again, so it kind of guides that conversation. So other than that, things are starting to pick back up again. David and I are going to meet with uh, Brad Curtis on engineering next week to uh, start scheduling our project for the summer. Um, Division Boulevard, Reynolds Avenue uh, are the two primary ones. Uh, the underground and Reynolds Avenue should be coming. It's done as far as the design. We're waiting to hear back from Excel on cost estimate. And uh, that needs to be done before we actually pay Reynolds. So things are happening fairly quickly, so, so to speak. Grand Avenue on that. Grand Avenue, but I, honestly, I want to hold off on Grand Avenue. <laughs> just in case we need to dip into that part of the reserve to help offset the sewer lagoon. You know, so that's the contingency. That's the last big project. I do want to do it, but uh, as far as capital projects, I don't want to hit anything too hard until I see the first quarter of sales tax revenues. Mm -hmm. I want to see how those go. Because that's. Uh, the first quarter of last year was tremendous, the best I've ever seen, and then after that it just went down. So we'll see what happens. Stimulus check funding. Yeah, I, not to throw a wrench and stuff, I heard today that China had the best economic year they've ever had since COVID started. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Shipping all the medical supplies <laughs> across the world. True story, but anyway. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, I'm glad we're meeting again. I got a little bored over the winter time. So, sorry, Mary. We rock and roll. But, uh, any updates from the front office, Mary? You want to add to? I know, it's impromptu. No. <laughs> no, we're doing what we're doing. You got a retirement date set. Same thing every um, Well, I'm, I'm waiting for someone to create a job description and, and it's close to no things. Okay. <laughs> so no. But I'm I Take your time. Take yeah, your time. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just not <laughs> You asked. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, be. That was me. But no, I whenever. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, just and, unless you want to give me the fruit early. Why don't we just put it off till after? <laughs> 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 I second that. <laughs> I wasn't thinking we'll quite that long. We'll revisit after the sewer of the moon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just to piggyback on that, I did pull that up today too, and I started tweaking it. Way to go, Because the last time we modified, it did not have treasure. It had town clerk only, and then I 
trying to tweak it a little bit and uh, we'll get that out. Right now the RFP is out for engineering. Here that knows a couple of terms the last week. Um, that's due February 12th. That'll come from the board probably the first thing of March right now, anticipate unless there's any issues. But uh, yeah, probably I'm pretty sure in February I'll be sitting on the advertisement for Chapter Treasure. And then Mary's has her tentative deadline when she would like to move on, but she's more willing to stay and help us out until we have somebody fully trained. Because I don't want our town board treasurer giving a two weeks quick training. That's uh, at least some, a couple of months to experience the boards and planning commission. So we get somebody hired and, and going in the, the March and April, just kind of speaking out loud. Uh, Mary has a lot to go over with, with elections, record retention, court, overseeing, deputy clerk, finance clerk, or utility clerk. So there's a lot of moving parts in the front office. So they want a big old party, and express. Mary loves Chinese food. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Usually for her birthday, I get Pan <laughs> Express, and I just bring it back here because she loves Chinese food. Oh, nice. That's awesome. I like Chinese food. Yeah. Really? You all like Chinese food? There you yeah. go. I have never brought Chinese food because that's either a love it or hate it thing. I'm up for it. It's very okay. Good. Well, you know, we're going to have a lot of uh, planning yeah, this meetings yeah. coming up. So I like this part of it. Yes. So, Mr. Clark, I'm hoping you're buying your lotto tickets so you can pay for this wastewater treatment <laughs> plant. Yeah, my offer is still good. I did the math the other day, and uh, I wouldn't have a problem. You, you, you remember the naming requirement, no? no. You can name it Daffy Duck. We don't care as long as you give us some money. Larry Clark Street. Well, but you remember the original offer, right? <laughs> I do, and it's it's irrelevant. <laughs> oh, I think it's very <laughs> Well, thank you, Larry. Sure. Anything else before the board? All right, guys, thank you. We stand adjourned. All right, Larry, thank Missy for letting me use your laptop. <laughs> yeah, really, uh, I'll do that.